In this video we're going to talk about projectile motion and specifically we're going to talk about horizontal projectile motion. When I say horizontal projectile motion I'm talking about something like a ball rolling off a table or a cliff or something like this. So this is an object that was initially traveling just horizontally like this blue ball here moving across the top of this cliff and then it will roll over the edge and begin to fall down to the very bottom. Projectile motion is a term that we use to describe the motion of an object that is moving both horizontally uh, and vertically, uh, but that the only thing that's causing acceleration is the force of gravity. So that's going to be the vertical part. So we could have projectile motion of something rolling and then falling off, or we could have a situation like throwing a ball. So if I threw a ball in that arc, that would also be projectile motion. Again, projectile motion uh, only has an acceleration in the vertical direction because gravity is the only thing that's going to be causing this thing uh, to accelerate. It's important to understand that a ball rolling uh, across a cliff like this and then uh, rolling over the edge is going to be the same as a ball falling straight down in free fall. Okay, what I mean by that is that both of these objects, this red ball, which is going to fall straight down, only has gravity causing its acceleration. And when this ball leaves the edge of the cliff, it also just has gravity causing its acceleration. So if we were able to look at these objects as they were falling, this blue ball would come to the edge of the cliff, roll off, and if we took a picture after one second, and if I dropped the red ball at the exact same instant, we see something like this. This is kind of a freeze frame here, where they've both fallen the exact same distance. Now the blue ball is moving horizontally. It's continuing to move at the same velocity it was traveling as it moved across the cliff. Let's take another picture after another second. Once again, the blue ball and the red ball have been falling at the exact same acceleration, so they're in the same position vertically after another second. So we have two seconds total. Let's take another picture after three seconds. And so we can see that both the projectile motion of the blue ball in the free fall of the red ball, they're going to be at the exact same vertical position after three seconds because they're both experiencing the acceleration due to gravity. It's important to understand that the horizontal component of the blue ball's motion, right, as it moves horizontally, that's going to be independent of its vertical motion. It's almost as if we have two objects, one moving horizontally and one moving vertically. They don't interact with each other. And so the horizontal is going to stay at a very constant rate of motion. What's going to relate the horizontal component and the vertical component is going to be time. And so they are connected by time, but other than that, their motion is going to be uh, basically independent of each other. Okay, let's try solving a problem. So here's an example. A ball rolls across the ground towards the edge of a cliff at 2.5 meters per second and then rolls over the edge. And we want to know how far did the ball land from the edge of the cliff. And so we're going to solve for this distance right here between the edge of the cliff and wherever the ball landed. I'm going to call this delta x, which means the change in the position in the x direction. And if I put a little ledge in here to tell me that horizontally is x and vertically is going to be y. And then the one thing I do know, or sorry, two things that I know, I know the velocity of the ball initially, and this is actually the velocity in the x direction, so that's v sub x there, and that's going to be 2.5 meters per second. And I also now know the uh, height of this cliff. So I know the cliff is going to be 35 meters. And I can call that actually uh, delta y because this will be the change that the ball had in its, in its y position. So if I want to find delta x, the equation you're probably thinking of is a very simple one. It's delta x is going to be equal to the velocity of the object. I'm just going to put velocity in the x direction times time. And this actually comes from velocity equals change in position over time. So that's where I'm getting that equation. I do know the velocity in the x direction, but I don't know the time. What I'm looking for is how long was the ball in the air. To find time, I can treat this problem as, as if it's a free fall problem, and I can just work in the vertical component because I know that a ball falling off of a cliff or rolling off of a cliff is going to be the same thing as dropping a ball in free fall. And so I can look at the free fall equation of delta y 
is equal to 1 half of g times t squared. And this is for any object that's in free fall. Now I do know delta y, I know the change in the position of y. That's going to be 35 meters, that's the height of the cliff. And I do know g, g is going to be the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And I can solve for time. Now I'm going to rearrange this equation uh, to be able to solve four times. So I've got to get rid of that one half first. I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So basically I'm going to have two times 35.0 meters. And then I can divide both sides by 9.81 to cancel the 9.81. So 9.81 meters per second. And so that cancels that, that cancels that. I still have to get rid of that squared sign. So if I take the square root of both sides, I will isolate t all by itself there. And so when I solve this, I'll find that t is equal to 2.67 seconds. So that's the time that the ball took to get from the top of the cliff to the bottom. Since the horizontal component, the stuff I have in red there, is related to the vertical component by time, in other words, they share time, I can bring this time that I just solved for and plug it into the equation I have here for delta x. And so the velocity, the initial velocity in the x was 2.5 meters per second. So I have 2.5 times the time that I just solved for of 2.67 seconds. And so the distance the ball traveled in the x direction, in other words, the distance from the edge of the cliff, is going to be 6.68 meters. And so that's the answer to this problem. Now keep in mind that we are ignoring air resistance. And so that is horizontal projectile motion.